no one knows now that Sardison and Frame are dead, um, what went on between the two of them. I'd love to have been a fly on the flypaper inside his little batch um, when they were together. And I think that quite a lot of what I've written is, is quite probable and plausible. As it turned out, she lived here for the 16 most extraordinary months of my life. One, one of the things that I've done in the play is to take all of Janet's artistic development and all her life and cram it into the 17 months that she spent in Sargison's army hut. Other people told me that they had a, a kind of codependent relationship and you could see them like in Woolworths down in Takapuna sort of squabbling over there, you know, under a dollar bin or something like that. She had a game I was told about where she would leave him every evening with a little riddle, a verbal riddle. And, but he finds these things and he thinks it's word salad, you know, the schizophrenics talk. And then it dawns on him what it really is. And he said to her, you're not schizophrenic, you're not mad, you're a writer. And just go off and write. It's as if the world had just been named for the first time. You're in command from the beginning to the end. It's very much a written thing. And then you give it away and they turn it into something else and that's right. You know, there's a, there's a potential on the stage that I see for a certain kind of transformation. You know, the willing suspension of disbelief that enables a certain kind of magic to occur on stage. And so I'm going to be very interested to see how that's brought about, but I'm also confident about it. Um, not least because I'm having nothing to do with it. <laughs> You're not mad. You're the only sane person on the planet. You're too bloody sane, that's your trouble. I hope that people understand how important Sargison is as a writer and what a good writer he is. I want people to understand something of what Janet went through. To me, it's, a, it's such a New Zealand story. You've got this dumpy little mum type figure. She's got all this stuff in her head about people, men getting pregnant with buffaloes and, and so on. And I just think it's so wonderful, you know. Sometimes I think I've made her up, like one of those animated cartoon figures. I wonder if there's a way to rub her out. One of the ways I think you measure a great writer is that they don't die when their work dies. And the notion that she's still around is something that I have because she constantly keeps popping up. In, in a real sense, she's not dead. I think people will be finding her meaningful uh, in many years to come.